hey everyone in this video we'll refactor the runtime run state of our battle system to use a state stack architecture so this is one of the most biggest state in the battle so once we refactor this a major part of the battle system refactor will be done so let's look at how to do it by the way i started a new series on patreon that covers how to make a 3d pokemon game like pokemon legends arceus in unity so if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, let me go ahead and create the run turn state. All right. So I'll just get rid of the default code. And this is going to be a state of battle system. All right, so next I'll make it a singleton by caching a public static reference. Okay. So next I'll overwrite the enter function. And from the enter function, first I'll cache a reference to the battle system so that we can access all its variables. Okay. And next, from the enter function, we have to run the code for running the state. Right. So we already have the code for it in the battle system. So it's in the run turns function. Okay. And this function also calls other functions like run move, run move fx, and all that. So we have to copy all these functions into the run turn state. So I'll copy all the code from the run turns function to the show damage details function. I'll actually cut it because I don't need it in the battle system anymore. Okay, so I'll cut that and paste it into our new run turn state class. Okay, so right now the code is full of errors. But don't worry, a lot of these errors can be fixed pretty easily. So let's start on the top. So first, I'll remove this line because we are not dealing with the enum states anymore. Okay. So next, we have errors when we use the player unit and enemy unit objects because these are objects defined in the battle system and they are not available in our run turn state okay but we had made properties to expose these in the previous video so just using the property instead of the private variable will fix this issue okay but then we'll have to go through all these code and change those so another way to fix this without changing a lot of code is by creating another local variable over here for the player and enemy unit. Okay, and then from the enter function, we can assign those variables by using the properties that we defined. Okay, so now you can see that we don't have any errors when we use the player unit and enemy unit objects. So next, we have to do the same thing for the party screen and the dialog box also. So let's go ahead and create local variables for those. Okay, so we haven't created a property to expose the party screen yet. So let's go to the battle system script and do that.
OK. So now we'll be able to assign it from here. So those errors should be gone now. So next we don't have access to the current move variable. So for this, we can't use our old current move variable because it is set from the handle move selection function, which we are not using anymore. We are using the move selection state instead. Right. So what I'll do is I'll define public properties that we can set from the move selection state and then use in the run turn state. Okay. So here I'll create a public property for selected move. And while we're here, let's also create one for the selected action because we'll have to set that from the action selection state. All right, so now from the run turn state, we can go ahead and use the selected move property. All right, so that error is gone. So next we have to deal with these problems. So since we are not using the enum states anymore, we can't check if the battle is over like this. So the way this is working is by calling the battle over function and this function will set the state enum to battle over. So since we can't use this anymore, we can just use the boolean variable to specify if the battle is over instead of using a state. Okay. So here I'll create a boolean variable called as battle over and I'll actually make it a property so that we can also access it from the run turn state. Okay, and I'll make the setter private so that we'll only be able to set it from the battle over function. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's set it to true from the battle over function. And when we start a new battle, we can actually set it to false. Okay. So next, from the unturned state, we can use the is battle our property. And by the way, while we are here, let's just fix these errors where we call the battle over function. So here we have to call BS dot battle over. But this is also giving an error because our battle over function is not public. So let's make it public. Okay. So now the error should be gone and we just have to change battle over to battle system dot battle over. Okay, so now in the run turn state function, instead of checking the state enum, we can simply check if battle system dot is battle over is true. Okay, so let's also do that from all the other places. All right, let me also do it from here. Okay, and finally we also have to do it from here. But here it is not equal to, so you have to check if battle over is false. All right, so those errors are fixed in the run turns function. So next let's fix these lines. So here we can just get rid of the state equal to busy line. We don't need that anymore. And for the switch Pokemon, I'm just going to comment this for now because we'll be dealing with that in the next video. And then we have the try to escape function. This we can set up now itself. So let's copy that from the battle system script. Okay, I'll go ahead and copy that. And let me paste it down over here. It has few errors, we'll fix that later. But the error over here should be gone. Okay. So next, this is the final error that we have 
in the run turn state function. So to go to action selection state, we can't simply call this function. Instead, we'll have to change the state in the state machine. Right. So I'll call battle system dot state machine dot change state and I'll change the state to action selection. Alright. So now we have fixed all the errors in the run turns function. So let's go down and see in what other functions we have errors. Okay, so we have an error here. So here again we are checking for the battle over by comparing the state enum. So instead of this, we can just use the is battle over property. Okay, and after that, from here we are waiting until the state is back to running turn. So we don't have to do this anymore because when you're using the state stack architecture, we can simply push a state and wait for it to complete. We don't have to do hacks like this. So let's just get rid of this line. And I'll also get rid of it from here. Okay. So next let's go down and see what other errors we have. So here again we are using lots of local variables from the battle system like is train a battle, train a party and all that. So we can simply convert them into a property to fix these issues. So first we have to change the is train a battle variable. So I'll just make it a public property with a private setter. All right, and just to make sure that the naming convention is correct, I'll just rename it and make the first letter of the property uppercase. Okay, so next we have to do the same for the variables like player party, trainer party, wild Pokemon and all. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, and I'll also rename all these properties to make sure that the first letter is uppercase just so that our naming conventions are consistent. All right. So now back in our runtown state, we can use the property instead of using the local variables. Okay. Or we can just create local variables for each of these and assign the property to it. So I think that will be better because we don't have to change a lot of code. So let me create local variables for things like a trainer battle, player party, trainer party and all. All right, and we can assign it from the enter function. Okay, so that should fix all the errors here. And next we have an issue with the battle victory music object. So let's go ahead and make that a property. So since this is a serialized field, I don't want to make it a property over here. Instead, I'll just write a simple getter like this. All right, and I'll just use it from here. In this case, I don't want to create local variables and all that because this variable is only used once in the code. All right, so next we have some errors in the move to forget selection area. So I'm just going to comment this for now. I'll be dealing with it in the next video. Okay. So next we have some errors in the check for battle over function. So I'll be dealing with things like party selection and Pokemon switching and all that in the next video. So we can just comment this for now. But if we comment this then we'll get an error because this if statement doesn't have any code under it. So for now we'll just write a return over here. We'll be dealing with this in the next video. All right, so let me also do the same for the about the use function. 
All right. So finally, let's fix the issues in the try to escape function. So first, let me get rid of the enum state. Okay. And we also don't need this statement over here. So let me remove that. So next, there's also another one over here. So let me remove that. And next, let's change the call to the battle over function to battle system dot battle over. And that error should be fixed. Okay, and finally, we have to deal with the escape attempts local variable. So let's turn that into a property. Okay, I'll make it a public property. So in this case, we have to use a private setter because we are changing the value of the escape attempts from here. Okay, so here we can just change it to battle system dot escape attempts. And by the way, let me also rename the property to keep the naming conventions standard. All right, so that's it. We have fixed all the errors in our run turn state. So next, we just have to call the run turns function from the enter function. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and here for the battle action, we can just pass the selected action variable. And by the way, I made the selection action variable integer while defining it. So let me go ahead and change it into a battle action enum. Okay. So now we'll run the turn when we enter the state. So next, let's write the code to switch to the state from the more selection state. So from here, when a move is selected, we just have to set it to the selected move property of the battle system. And then we can just change the state to run turn state. So next, from the action selection state, when we select an action, we also have to set the selected action property of the battle system. And while we're here, let's also write the if conditions for the other actions. Okay, so if selection is one, it means the bag is selected. And if it's two, it means Pokemon is selected. And finally, if it's three, it means run is selected. So we'll deal with the bag and Pokemon actions in the next video. But from here, we can implement the run action by simply setting the selected action to battle action dot run and then calling the run turn state. Okay, so that's all we have to do to run the turn. So before we test, we also have to fix a few errors in the battle system script. So here there are some places where we are calling the run turn function. So I'll just come with this for now. Soon we'll be getting rid of this code entirely. I'm just keeping it here for now because we can reference it to understand how our code was working. So let me just comment all the places from which the run turns function was called previously. Okay. So that is all we have to do. So now let's go to Unity and attach our run turn state script to our battle system. Okay. So now let's try testing this 
and see if we can run the turn using our new refactored code. Okay, let me start a battle. And now if I select a move, you can see that the turn is running properly. Okay. So there's this issue that we've introduced after refactoring the move selection. So I'll actually be fixing that in the next video. For now, let's focus on our run turn state refactor. Okay. So yeah, you can see that the turns are running properly. We can also try running from the battle and that's also working. So we have successfully refactored our run turn state. So I'll stop the video here and in the next video, we'll deal with things like using items and switching Pokemon from the battle. So before you leave, make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel. That will really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.